So what's up, how you doing today? In this video, we're gonna take a look at a different approach to the pentatonic scale. We're gonna look at a minor pentatonic, and at the end, we'll take a look at how this also works for C major pentatonic as well. It's really, really easy. So if we have a minor pentatonic, this kind of main one right here, and we take the one below that, so this position, we're gonna take some sweet spots between these two. So this one right here, these four, and then moving it up, and then moving it. And that is what I call the U shape. So it's something that I kind of gravitated towards playing a lot over the years, and then I realized like, oh, I'm doing this a lot. And I'm like, ah, oh, what is this? So what would I call this, you know? And I, I thought the U shape, because it looks like a U, except, you know, if you took that note out, it would be symmetrical, but throws it off a little bit, so it's like, it's like a crooked U, you know? Um, but it's just a, a way to kind of name the, the concept so it makes more sense to me, I can remember it a little more. And now, what is it and why would I use this? But it, it helps kind of shape things a little different for me, just a little different than kind of normally being like that. Because this way we're locked in a little bit. You have to use your pinky or stretch for your third finger, but here, it's all your strong finger. So it's similar to using a diagonal approach where you go up like this, but it's, that's, that's a more popular approach. But this is going up and back down. So what is this good for? Um, aside from, again, giving you a little different sound, I think, and giving you your strong fingers and everything symmetrical with two, the two frets, but it helps with sliding around positions. So, and now I know this note right here, this is a D, that's a D. Some, some of you may have noticed, oh, it's a little weird. But you can get around that by, it makes it sound like there's a little bit of a pattern there. So don't worry about that, it's the same note. Uh, twice, you know? So great for sliding, great for hammer-ons, pull-offs and stuff. And it's also great for double stops. And that is just playing two notes at a time. It's a little muddy down here, but... And I don't actually know what the double stops refers to other than obviously double means the two notes, but the stop, in terms of, you know, speaking of, you know, names for concepts, I don't know what that means. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments below what that double stop, the stop part of it, you know, refers to. But I love playing with two notes all the time instead of just always just, you know, playing chords and then, you know, you know, getting heavy distortion that most people do. I like to, in my solos and leads, do those as well. So that gives us just a little different approach to, uh, to the scale there. Now, if you want to do it for C major pentatonic, it's the same exact thing. Um, there's a thing called relative major, relative minor. So we just think of the same notes, but now instead of this, these right here, these three A's as our roots, now it's these, or in this position, just two uh, C's. So if you're playing the, some kind of C situation, and there you go. It makes sense. Like, and it's just like a nice way of making it sound really smooth and really simplifying it and kind of slipping and sliding around. So hopefully you found that helpful. And if you're looking for more stuff to help with your solos, I have a course, Transform Your Guitar Solos. I'll put a link in the description down below where you can check out more info on that. And if you want a free mini course that is actually the kind of prerequisite to the course, they go together. I have one called Improvise in Any Situation. I'll also put a link to that in the description down below and that'll get you kind of going if you're new to improvising and you don't know what to do or even playing for a little while, but you still get frustrated because there's some musical situations where you're just not sure exactly what's going on. That course will not really tell you everything that's going on, but it's gonna give you some shortcuts so that you can just get playing sooner rather than later and not be so frustrated. There's a lot of practice backing tracks in both those courses so that you get a lot of time to practice things, applying it and work on honing in your own sound. I think it's a good way to kind of learn in a very, very natural way. More like learning a language rather than having your face in a book, right? So hopefully that helps. But if uh, you want to check those out, there are the links down below. And hopefully I'll see you in a video sometime soon.